In the next step, we're going to configure the management interface on our FortiGate appliance. So as a recap, let's bring up our network diagram. We'll be configuring this port right here, port seven on our 60D to be our management interface. And this will be the IP address that we'll be configuring. Now we also need to add a static route on our firewall so it knows how to reach this subnet here that my computer or my laptop is currently on. And that is on the 10.67.78.0 slash 24 um, subnet. And to reach that network, this needs to be the next hop that we need to specify. So let's go ahead and get this set up. To configure interfaces on the FortiGate, on the left side, let's go to network and let's go to interfaces. And doing that will show the list of all interfaces on our appliance. On the very top shows a graphical view of our firewall unit. And we even see whether something is connected or not connected. So here we see that we have two WAN ports, we have a DMZ port, and we have seven um, internal fixed ports. Now by default, all these seven ports are configured as a hardware switch. So we're gonna change that because we want to configure port six and port seven very differently. And our focus in this video is configuring port number seven. Now you'll also see other details here besides that. So one, you see the actual name of that interface and how it is represented. Then you will see, of course, details of the interface number. Now this really applies really for the internal because these are physical ports that exist on our units. So again, we have our two WAN ports and we have our DMZ port up here. You will also see the IP address configured on that interface. And this here reflects the default IP that we are currently accessing right now. And you will see various services that are enabled um, on that interface that we can basically um, SSH or use HTTPS and little things like that. But again, let's go ahead and start setting this up for our management network. So what we're gonna do is, let's go ahead and first edit this existing um, switch profile. So we're gonna select that and go to edit. Okay, and here it's gonna show all the physical interface members that are basically added as part of this hardware switch. So we're gonna go ahead and take out interface seven. Let's go ahead and do that. And then from there, we're going to leave everything alone here because we're going to configure interface seven very differently. And this is important because we don't want to get ourselves kicked out of this session because I believe my laptop is plugged into port number six. So once we're done here, let's go ahead and say okay. Okay, and doing that, now under physical interfaces, we see a new listing here called internal seven, which is fantastic. So now let's go ahead and select that physical port and let's go to edit. For this interface, starting at the very top and working our way down to the bottom. So this reflects the actual interface name and the MAC address for that interface itself. For the alias, we're gonna call this management. So we'll say something like um, MGMT. Right now that interface is currently up, which is correct, that we saw from the previous page. It is now a physical um, interface that we defined. And for the role, basically we can define whether it's basically a LAN, WAN, DMZ, but for us it's gonna be undefined because this is treated as a management um, network that we are building here. Now for the addressing, now, maybe we get the IP address uh, dynamically or through some other kind of configuration. But for us, we want to manually specify the IP address. So based on our design, let's bring that up here. And that will be basically 101.52 slash 24, a class C mask. So let's go ahead and set that up. So it'll be 192.168.101.52 and with the correct mask. Once we're done with that, we can now specify what services we want to enable on that interface. So we can go ahead and say that we want to enable ping access, HTTPS access, which is important if we want to access the, um, the web user interface here. And let's also enable, let's say maybe SSH. And once we're done with that, we have the option of maybe enabling that interface or that network really for DCP services, but we're not going to do that because that's not required. And then from there, there are other options that we'll cover in different video topics. But really, we are done here. Of course, make sure that the interface is enabled. And now let's go ahead and say OK to apply those changes. 
Okay, so that has been completed. And now we see that the interface is currently up and we see the IP address and the mask that we configured and the services that we enabled for that interface.